Two. So, motor control and chronobiology. And there were two separate uh, lecture-linked notes. I have the, the uh, HTML files on two different ones. Sometimes they don't always fall in the same lecture. So, there's three main objectives. We're going to focus the first half here on the, the impacts of gravity or, or weightlessness uh, on posture, locomotion, and related functions. So now we're starting to think a little bit about some of the performance factors of, of how gravity governs your life beyond just the basics of staying alive. Some interesting things, like I've said a few times, you know, the, the value of this class is, in the end, um, being aware that there's a lot of things you don't know. And that, that there really is something to be said for that by just sort of knowing, being familiar, knowing that there's a lot more to things than, than maybe appears on the surface. And we're going to scratch below the surface on a lot of these. Today is, is a good example of moving in that direction. We'll talk about a lot of the input influences here. You don't have to understand them so much as you have to be aware of them. That makes sense. Systems engineering class, almost. Um, so neurobiologically speaking, it's actually more difficult to stand still than to walk. When you walk, you're always in this almost falling mode, and all the feedback systems are, are amplified. You, know, you think about the, 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 uh, the signal coming back to your brain to keep you standing up when you're, when you're not moving is very subtle motions. And, you know, you imagine building something that had to balance with the CG on, you know, on your foot at your ankle and have a little bit forward flex and maintain that structure versus one that's walking, sort of almost always falling and catching itself. So from the neurobiological standpoint, it's actually quite hard to stand upright and stand still, especially under certain circumstances. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, locomotion control. So this is now where we're going to get into some of these other, these, you're going to see the, the same terms and different, uh, typo. Um, the same terms we're going to talk about under different aspects of the class. But neurovestibular control, what's the neurovestibular system? What's the vestibular system? What is that, what's that comprised of? You know what that is? Well, it's more that it, it gives you your balance or it helps you have your balance. But what's the vestibular system? It's all the parts in your ear that aren't associated with hearing. So there's a lot of balance mechanisms for whatever reason are co-located with the uh, audio system up there. Um, vision, that's of course a very important part of balance. And then proprioceptive sensors. Don't I know what a proprioceptive sensor is? Down. It's called the seat of the pants sensor sometimes, but it's actually a little more than that. That's actually more of a tactile sensor. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you a demonstration of proprioceptive awareness. Okay? I want you to close your eyes, and you can, you can turn the camera here. Let's get everyone broadly. Don't zoom in on anybody. Close your eyes and hold your hand out like this. Hold both hands out. Close your eyes. Everybody, stretch. Should do this late in the class, seventh inning stretch. Now close your eyes and touch your nose. Okay, you can open your eyes now. How did, how, how did you know to move your hands where your nose was? That's proprioception. There's actually some feedback sensors that you are aware of in your body that as you're moving, the weight of the muscle, the weight of the arm and so forth, just, just from doing it over and over and over, there's a sense in there that tells you how much a given muscle fiber is stretched, tells you where your arm is in reference to your body. Now, if you were to do that exact same thing in, in, uh, in orbital space flight, where do you think you might be touching? Think you could do it? Reproduce it? Could you, could you close your eyes, touch your nose in space? I'd be touching Jenny's nose. <laughs> <laughs> she might slap you if you did that. You'd have to have long arms from there. Well, where do you think might happen? Well, above or below? Who, who says you? Who would, who would hypothesize it above? So think about what's happening here. Yeah. So, so actually, it would be it would be too high, because you're normally think you know you're normally compensating for gravity pushing down, and when gravity's not there, that same sensation is going to occur at a different level. So we'll get into that later. But some of the subtleties again of just just basic performance. Why not that high? But probably off a little bit. Some of the basic performance, and there's other things, specialized sensors on the sole of the foot called Fotter Pacini bodies. We'll go into those in a little bit. There's some, a lot of speculation about their, uh, their contribution to locomotion and other things. Um, so then there's related effects on musculoskeletal system. And this is, uh, again, we'll get back into this later, but just standing 
Uh, it, you, know, you, you have your body weight. When you're walking, it's about one and a half times the standing load. And when you're running, it's two or three or even more times. So you, you're absorbing a lot of impact when you're running. And that's critical for bone maintenance. So all this stuff, again, we're going to revisit under different levels. But for today, we're going to stick with locomotion. So let's think about mass and CG, momentum and balance. These things are all related, right? If you you got to have the back to be balanced, you need to have the the focal point or the point of contact be aligned with your CG, right? In one G at least. In space, does it matter? But what does matter is momentum. So momentum is decoupled from balance in this sense. You you, don't, you you can you can be in any position you want as long as you don't have any inertia pushing you somewhere. You'll stay there. So it's relatively easy. You you just have to. Make sure you don't have any torquing loads at your feet on this foot stanchion. Once you quit moving around and the inertia is settled down and, and taken out of the, out of, out of the, uh, the uh, system, there's nothing to balancing. It's much easier to balance here than it is here. This, this I, sh I sure couldn't do that. I know that. Um, I could probably do this one. Uh, you know, you're just out there kind of hanging on. Now, if inertia is different. You know, it's, it's easy to pick up a 1,000 pounds in space um, it's hard to stop a thousand pounds coming at you at five feet per second. So inertia doesn't go away. You still have to deal with the momentum aspects of it, but the weight and balance uh, are, are definitely completely removed from the equation uh, in a spaceflight setting.